Are you studying for the Praxis Elementary Education Multiple Subjects Combined Exam? That is test code 5001. If that is a test or more accurately, a series of tests that you need to pass, then good news. My name is Bob and I am with study.com and I'm going to help you and walk you through everything that you need to know in this video. We're going to cover all the basics for Praxis 5001 and how to best prepare so that you're ready for test day. All right, let's jump in. Let's start with the basics. Praxis 5001 is actually a combination of subtests 5002 through 5005 and allows you to schedule and take all four subtests in the same testing session. This is one of the most commonly administered Praxis exams because it covers off on the four key subject areas that elementary school teachers need to demonstrate proficiency in and is required for many teaching jobs across the U.S. Now, it's important to note that you do not have to take all four tests at once. However, most people choose to because of the cost savings. Registration for the Praxis 5001 costs $180, whereas registering for each subtest individually would cost you $64 each or $256 in total. That's a $76 in savings, but please note that you are signing up to take four full-length tests back to back to back to back, so there's an added degree of endurance involved here. All in, this test runs four hours and 35 minutes across the four separately timed subject-specific tests. Let's break this down. The first subtest or section covers reading and language arts and includes 80 questions over 90 minutes. The second section covers math and includes 50 questions over 65 minutes. The third section covers social studies and includes 60 questions over 60 minutes. The fourth and final section covers science and includes 55 questions over 60 minutes. Keep in mind that this means that you generally only have about one to one and a half minutes per question, and it is important not to linger too long on any single question. A couple of added details about the questions that you will face. One, the vast majority of the questions you will see will be standard multiple choice. These will include four or five possible answer choices, and only one will be correct. There's never a penalty for submitting a wrong answer, and so you are always better off guessing than leaving a question blank. Two, you will face a small number of more custom questions depending on the specific test. These include multiple choice with multiple correct answers, order matching, grids, and numeric entry. The test will always call these questions out and provide clear direction, so just make sure to read every question in full before jumping into the answer choices. Note, none of the four subtests include an essay, and the most you will be asked to write is either a single sentence or mathematical equation. Three, finally, each subtest may include one or two extra test questions that will not count to your final score. You won't know which ones they are and should treat every question like it counts. But don't be surprised if your official exam has a couple more questions than the totals listed above. And if you come across a question that feels like nothing you've practiced, don't let it psych you out. Each individual subtest will be scored independently and you will receive a score between 100 and 200 points for each subtest. You should receive your score report shortly after completing the final subtest and you will be given four separate scores, again, one for each subtest. To figure out if you passed, you will need to compare each score to your state's minimum score requirement. These score requirements differ by both subtest and state, so it is important that you go to ets.org to get the latest and most reliable information. If you don't meet the passing score for one or more subtests, don't worry, this is not the end. There is no limit to how many times you can take the praxis and failing the test doesn't define your abilities or future as a teacher. Also, 5001 is not all or nothing. Remember, you receive a separate score for each subtest, and so it's not uncommon for first-time test takers to pass some subtests, but not all. If this happens to you, remember that you do not need to retake the subtest that you have already passed. Next thing to think about is where you'll be taking the test. Test takers in the U.S. or Canada have two main options, testing at home or going into a testing center. We've done a whole video that goes into the pros and cons of each that I will link here, so check that out if you want more information. Testing at home can be really convenient, but it has some drawbacks, so please check out our video if you want some help as you make that decision. Please don't wait until you're done studying to register for your test. You can generally schedule up to 90 days in advance, and I do recommend taking a look at that sooner rather than later as testing slots will fill up 
and you may be left with a time or date that doesn't work as well for your schedule. All right, so we've covered the basics. Let's now go a bit deeper into the actual questions that you can expect to face on test day. First and foremost, Praxis 5001 is designed for potential teachers, so understanding effective strategies for teaching various facts and concepts to your students is just as critical as understanding them yourself. You should expect to see questions that ask you to demonstrate fundamental teaching skills such as lesson planning, classroom management, and assessing student learning in relation to a specific subject area. You will also want to be familiar with how to drive student engagement with abstract concepts, as well as being comfortable with breaking down complex problems into step-by-step -step solutions or explanations. Let's take a look at a sample problem. It reads, you are leading a discussion in your class about your school's proposal to stop selling junk food in the school cafeteria. Which of the following statements best demonstrates active listening? The correct answer here is C, because it focuses on the statements of your students. An active listener spends more time listening than talking and ensures that they elevate other people's ideas as opposed to focusing on their own. Next, I wanna get into the subject areas that each of the four subtests will cover. Now, there's a lot of information to absorb here, but remember, this test doesn't expect you to get a perfect score or remember everything. So to help you out, I'm going to give you my top three skills to master for each subtest. Again, this won't cover every question that you will face, but if you are comfortable with all of these skills, then you are well on your way to passing the test. First up, Praxis 5002, Reading and Language Arts. Skill number one, reading comprehension. This is the ability to understand, interpret, and analyze different types of texts, including literature, poetry, essays, articles, and instructional materials. Remember that you don't have unlimited time, so you should practice skimming for keywords and ideas. Skill number two, English language conventions. Understanding the rules of grammar, punctuation, sentence construction, and spelling is crucial for this exam. Trust your gut on these questions when being asked to find the error in a sentence. Read the sentence aloud in your head and focus on the parts that sound wrong to you or that you naturally hesitate over. Skill number three, writing skills. This includes the ability to plan, organize, write, and revise different types of texts. You won't have to write anything yourself. Remember, no essays in this test, but you will need to be able to apply this knowledge to evaluate existing pieces of written text. If any of the above feels unfamiliar to you or you want even more specifics about what is covered on the test, make sure to check out our video specifically for Praxis 5002 that I will link here. Praxis 5003 Math, skill number one, arithmetic and numerical operations. You need to have a strong understanding of basic arithmetic, including addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. You also need to be comfortable working with fractions, decimals, and percentages. Skill number two, algebraic concepts. The Praxis 5003 exam tests your knowledge of algebra, so you need to be familiar with variables, equations, and inequalities. You should also understand how to interpret and create algebraic expressions and equations. Skill number three, geometry and measurement. This includes understanding basic geometric shapes and their properties, as well as the ability to calculate area, volume, and perimeter. You should also be comfortable with different units of measurement and conversions between them. If any of the above feels unfamiliar to you or you want even more specifics about what is covered on the test, make sure to check out our video specifically for Praxis 5003 that I will link here. Next up, Praxis 5004 Social Studies. Skill number one, content knowledge. This is where you will want to spend the bulk of your time studying for this specific test. The Praxis 5004 covers a wide range of topics including history, geography, government slash civics, economics, and sociology. You should have a strong understanding of these subjects and be familiar with key concepts and theories related to each. The test doesn't expect you to be an encyclopedia, but you will also be asked to recall high-level facts about important events in history. Skill number two, reading comprehension and critical thinking. Expect to do a fair amount of reading as part of taking the test and be familiar with multiple different types of texts, such as historical documents, maps, graphs, and charts. You'll need to analyze and interpret these documents. You'll also be asked to evaluate these documents and form an opinion, such as comparing and contrasting, exploring cause and effect relationships, and drawing conclusions from written passages and graphics. Skill number three, research skills. 
you will be asked questions that require you to demonstrate research skills, such as differentiating between primary and secondary sources, analyzing historical data, and using evidence to support arguments. If any of the above feels unfamiliar to you or you want even more specifics about what is covered on the test, make sure to check out our video specifically for Praxis 5004 that I will link here. Finally, Praxis 5005, Science. Skill number one, content knowledge. Similar to Praxis 5004, Praxis 5005 asks you to recall facts, concepts, and principles across a wide range of topics. And there really isn't a substitute for memorization. Key scientific topics that you will want to be familiar with include life science, physical science, and earth science. Skill number two, scientific method and critical thinking. You will be expected to understand and interpret scientific processes and evaluate claims according to the framework of the scientific method. You should be familiar with hypothesis testing as well as how to structure and run an experiment. This includes being familiar with analyzing data, drawing conclusions, and being able to identify additional research questions to address in future experiments or studies. Skill number three, scientific communication. You must be able to clearly communicate scientific concepts. This includes the ability to use scientific vocabulary accurately and effectively. This also includes being familiar with formal research reports and scientific papers and their role in the scientific method. If any of the above feels unfamiliar to you or you want even more specifics about what is covered on the test, make sure to check out our video specifically for Praxis 5005 that I will link here. Now that you have a handle on what the Praxis 5001 is all about, you're probably wondering what to do next. I recommend taking a full-length practice test. That may feel like a daunting way to start, but this way you get an immediate feel for where you might need to put in some extra study hours. And don't stress about your score on the first one, all right? It's just a starting point to help you focus your studies. Once you've got a clear picture of where you stand, it's time to craft a study plan. It'll help you stay on track, and trust me, you'll feel great as you start mastering each concept area. And there you have it. Hopefully you're feeling a bit more confident for your Praxis 5001 exam after watching this video. If you found this helpful, don't be shy. Hit that like button, subscribe, and ring that notification bell so you won't miss out when we drop new teacher test prep content. And if you're looking for more test prep tips, don't stop here. Check out our other videos and don't forget to check out study.com and our comprehensive Praxis 5001 test prep course. It's jam-packed with all the nitty-gritty details I just skimmed over, including even more videos and a ton of practice questions, all with detailed answers so you can learn from your mistakes. Finally, if you're stuck on specific tests or questions, drop a comment below and let's see if we can tackle them together. And don't forget to circle back once you've passed your test. We'd love to join you in your victory dance. Happy studying.